Hey, welcome. I'm just going to show you a bit of uh, some coverage that I had when I was uh, put on New York City television as the blind artist of Pennsylvania. I'm also the Chi Mind Master on YouTube. Thank you very much. And when you get a chance, please click that subscribe button. Okay, hello, <laughs> yeah, right, Robert? Hello, everybody, and welcome to this episode of Disabilities Redefined. I am Dr. Truett Wagner, and we have two very, very special guests for you this evening. First, we have Christina Aran. Hello, Christina. Hi. So good to see you. Christina is my colleague, and we actually were at a meeting this morning, and then we walked over to the studio, and we've been very busy getting things ready. Because we have our first Skype interview, as you can all can see, with Robert Hoyt. Ho am I saying it right, Robert? Ho Hoyt? Yes, perfect. Thank you. Yes, who is uh, a up and coming artist. And um, now, Robert, why do you call yourself right away? So if people out there watching want to go to your Instagram page, what, what is it? T t t What's two two blind mice art? Okay. It's hashtag to blind mice art. Okay. And I'm the, I'm the blind artist of Pennsylvania because there's also a blind artist in Seattle and uh, he and I are friends as well. So okay. That's my brand. Great. Great. And now you have done a lot of press right here lately, haven't you? Yes. I was uh, on WNEP and ABC affiliate. I was on the Sunday paper. Uh, and people are finding that what I do is inspirational, that I'm uh, legally blind, yet I'm painting. That, well, that is very inspirational. Uh, okay, so, and Christina actually is my colleague, uh, Cooney leads Linking Employment Academic and Disability Services Specialist within the City University of New York, but she also actually is a very successful author. Uh, she is the author of Words as Weapons, which, beautiful cover. <laughs> Copy. Thank you so much. Can I sign for you? Yes, yes. We'll we'll show a copy of this, and you you have a, a what, Amazon. Is it? How, how can yes, people get a copy? Yes, it's on Amazon. Okay. All right. So let's let's just jump right into the interview. Uh, Robert, when did you first become interested in art? Well, uh, my story is a fascinating one. I became interested in art last March as a as a way of rehabilitating myself from congestive heart failure. The doctor said, you're on the plane, you're about to die, go home and get your affairs in order. And so far I've defied the odds. Mm -hmm. And I used painting as a way of bringing myself back to life. Okay, now you say back to life. Now, a quick question, were you always visually impaired or did that happen? Uh... It, it happened over time, Dr. T. Uh, I have uh, type one diabetes and slowly the optic mirrors have been uh, eaten away. I was declared legally blind in August of 2012. August 2012? And yes. How old were you? Do you mind me asking how old you were at the time? I was 48 years old. 48, okay. All right, August 2012. That's our spe that we have a special. <laughs> that was the year that within the city universe. Women. Yes, absolutely. That, that must be a special year, Robert. That yeah, was, that no was, such thing uh, coincidence. Well, well, let me tell you, that was the year that <clears throat> myself and Christina and a handful of other hardworking counselors for the disabled population, we became a hard. Up, up until that time, we had been working on a grant within the city university of New York, and That's August, cute. August 12th. Uh, 2000, uh, August 2012. I believe the a a exact date was August 6, I believe. But the well, it's God's, it's God's way of staying anonymous on right. these coincidences. Absolutely. And we became, <laughs> we became Cooney Leeds, in which I wanted to wear the T-shirt today to show everybody that we're, we're, we're still a group uh, and, and working very hard. So Bigger than ever. Bigger, bigger than, than ever, ever now, actually, yes. Congratulations to you guys. Thank you. So, you're a sketch artist, but... 
Now, Robert, you also do a lot of work as far as writing and po Now, what is this that I see? It's kind of like a poetry kind of thing. You do these. Well, I love to, I love to inspire people with basic quips. I'm a, I was a doctoral student before this right. happened. Well, so I'm, I'm fairly well educated. And I was also a psychotherapist for almost 30 years. Wow. So th this, this kind of fits with what I used to do. Uh, so what I try to inspire other people, put together quotes, and uh, that's that feels like it gives me a sense of purpose. Well, I think it does, and, and we love your work. And, and actually, it was funny because I was speaking to Christina one night on Instagram, or not speaking to, but communicating with Christina here one night over Instagram, and she is the one who told me about you. So that's a wonderful. <laughs> yeah. I love the, I love the community. Yes. I love the fact that we can connect in this way and. And Christina is an is an artist and an author, and uh, I feel like I'm a part of a beautiful community of people who are expressing themselves yeah. in ways that are genuine. I, I I think it is very genuine. Where, where do you get your inspiration from? Well, I I brought this just to show you. This is where I get my initial inspiration from, and that is from Helen Keller, who herself. Uh, is an author of 12 books and graduated from Radcliffe College. And she is my inspiration. She's saying to me the same thing, don't let things stop you. And she was born deaf, dumb, and blind. Right. And I've had almost 40, over 48 years of, of you know, being visual and able to see. So I think that's, that's who I really uh, take my hat off to, which is Helen Keller. Right, right. Okay, well, what do you think is going to happen with all this artwork? Are you planning on showing it in a gallery? Do you want to do something specifically for, a, a, you, know, a, you know, New York City, Soho? Well, I'd love, to, I'd love to be down in Dumbo. I'd yeah. love to bring that to the flea markets and that. So people out here in Pennsylvania, they say, oh, my God, your stuff would blow up if you got into New York. Uh -huh. But it's not so easy for me to do so. I've already had a number of showings uh, at Barnes and Nobles, etc. Um, I don't really want to go into traditional galleries. Mm -hmm. um, so my hope is, uh, if I gave you an example, I actually hand delivered a Jerry Seinfeld sketch to Jerry Seinfeld, and that's a beautiful opportunity. And he's deaf, he's out of Manhattan, I believe. Right. right? Now, but now you, so you you did a sketch for Jerry Seinfeld, and he. Uh, you delivered it to him to his apartment? No, he came here to the Kirby Center in, uh, in Wilkes Bar, Pennsylvania. Okay. And, and he was doing a comedy show. Oh, wow. And yes. It was great. It was gracious enough. And uh, so that's a beautiful yes. thing. Mm -hmm. um, so, so when I think about my what I call famous faces, um, I basically do a, a landscapes as well. I was inspired by Bob Ross, mm -hmm. who was on Netflix. And my joke is I was pay, paying $7.99 a month for my art teacher. Right. And that was Netflix. Oh, and Bob Ross yeah. has he's inspired me to use a, a house painting brush to do wonderful landscapes. And people right. know what I'm talking about when I talk about the guy with the big afro. Right. It's beautiful, man. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, we're going to yeah. come, come back to you in a few minutes. So now we want to ask well, Christina you. a few questions, and then we'll we'll uh, wind it up with a, with a um a group group question. Hey, Christina, how are you? Great. So, Christina, you're uh, Russian. Yes, originally from Russia. Russia. Now, you came, if I'm understanding it correctly, you came here when you were 16? Yes. Okay, we spoke about this earlier today. But you said it was not a, like, you just didn't, it, it didn't happen easy. overnight. You, it was no, a process. It was not an easy transition. Okay. It took years until we were able to come here. Okay. So, yeah. It but was you, one of the toughest parts, I would say, of my teen years, uh -huh. the immigration itself, because everything just changed. Mm -hmm. And it was no longer the same life. So right. you just have to adjust quickly and kind of make good decisions. You no longer feel like you're a kid anymore. You kind of had to grow up overnight. Yes, even when you came to a, when you yes. got to America. Yeah, well, it was a it was a culture shock, right? It was a huge culture shock, and um, I was at the age where I kind of was like, do I start working? Do I go to school? What do I do? Well, I understand, if I'm understanding it correctly, you got here at 16. You did not go to high school. You went right into so college. college. Right, but you did spend a few of your teen years in Russia. 
Well, yeah, I, I mean, but there were no opportunities there for right. me, you know, I okay. kind of was lost and I was dreaming to come to U.S. I guess we I spoke about that today, you were like, oh, you, everybody wanted to come to America. The American and, and you also yeah. said that everybody followed uh, popular music, pop, pop culture <laughs> over in <laughs> What was big at the time? Well, uh, um, um, you, um, who was it? Uh, who, who were some of the big people? Because I'm, I'm a little bit older than you, so, well, yeah. <laughs> we did listen to a lot. We watched like videos on TV and we'd be excited. Like to MTV? Listen. Did you guys get that over there? <laughs> I think so. I think there was an MTV, but for us it was like a treat. Yes. It would happen like once in a while and we're like, oh, yes. <laughs> you know, oh, really? Like, oh, Janet no. Jackson, oh, oh, yeah. Madonna, and um, MC. MC. <laughs> <laughs> no, MTV was in every dorm room here in, in America. Yeah, that's interesting then. It was like a TV show there then. It was. Right. But now you are a CUNY Leeds counselor. Yeah. So you did your BA, you did your undergraduate work at the City University within a campus here. What, Queens College? Queens, College, Queens yeah. College? But now you did your master's at NYU, mm -hmm. both of which in psychology. Okay, and then you now you're working out with, with the disabled population. Mm -hmm. And do you like it? Do you like I love it. I mean... I always was interested in the study of the mind, mm -hmm. um, you know, and for me, it's just, you know, how does the mind operate? What happens to people when they become mentally ill? Like, what is it exactly that's happening? Mm -hmm. And um, there were some personal things that happened in my life as well that inspired me to study psychology. Right. Um, when we came here, unfortunately, my mom had to go to depression right. because she had a really bad culture shock. And, you know, they come as adults, they leave so much stuff behind and they kind of want to give us a better life. And because of that, they go through a much harder time, that, which we don't realize how hard it is for them. You mean uh, families coming yes. from, from Russia? Yes, our parents. Yes, yes, we yes, are yes. able to adjust quicker because we're still kids. Yes. But for them, them most of their life has already, you know, been in Russia. Right. So I didn't know how to help her. I didn't know what to do. And you and also said you're, you're, you're limited I, with your language as well. I came here pretty much speaking, like, just basic maybe English. And mm -hmm. I was terrified of speaking English. I knew that I had a horrible accent. I knew uh -huh. that people would not understand me. Like whenever I would pick up a phone and someone would speak in English, I had no idea what they were saying. Right. And my sister would always tell me, you just have to go and talk to them. Uh -huh. Just, you know, you gotta have the guts to go come up to people and start talking. I'm like, I can't, I'm so scared. <laughs> <laughs> but um, when I started, um, for the first college that I went to was Queensboro Community College. Mm -hmm. And the reason I started there because, you know, I needed to get some uh, basic English skills and they really helped me out. I have like a special place in my heart for Queensville Community College. And then after that, when I already transferred to Queens College, I was good to go. I'm like, I love education. I love being in school here. And I assimilated very quickly into American culture. I really enjoyed it. I was so happy to be here. And I told myself, I'm never going back to Russia. I don't even <laughs> want to go to visit. <laughs> right, but then you also said that even at an early age, you loved the creativity. You, you, you loved mm -hmm. writing and music and Right. You said you started writing at very early in, in yeah, life. I was 12 years 12 old. 12 years old, right. Well, b b the, the book, Words as Weapons, uh, tell, tell us a little bit about this. What's, what's... So, you know, this was my lifelong dream. Mm -hmm. And um, I had a lot of scribbles that, you know, I brought from Russia. I used to write in Russian before. But of course, once I started speaking English more, once I assimilated into the culture, my you know, my language changed, my the ideas changed, and my inspiration changed. So. I always say um, that everything in life inspires you. Uh, people are inspired by love, they're inspired by friends, by relationships, by pain most of the time. Mm -hmm. So for me, to get through things in life, I have to write about them. I have to put it in writing in order for me to get through it, in order for me to feel it, mm -hmm. and in order for me to understand it and comprehend what's going on. Right. So a lot of poetry that's in my book, um, I actually put dates on it if you look at it. Um, for each poem, there's a certain date. So if someone knows me very well, and there's not that many people who know me very well, they would know exactly what was happening with me when I wrote that poem. Mm -hmm. So it's more like sort of um, a diary, I would say, yeah. um, put into like a poetry. Very, very and a personal. Few words. It's, yeah, it's yeah, very personal. But it's beautiful. It's a beautiful it's cover. Very personal. Yes. Okay. Well, thank you very much. I can't wait to look into it. I read a lot of it on Instagram, and we'll we'll let everybody know. Your Instagram is your Instagram page words as weapons. Uh, it's Christina Aaron. I'm Christina. Christina okay. At Christina. Aaron. Aaron. Great. Yeah, because you put a lot of lot of your poetry on Instagram. Yeah. Which brings us to uh, and, and, and Robert, uh, I, I think yeah. getting close to our our final question. And that, of course, being social media. And what do we think of social media? I think social media is absolutely wonderful. 
I really do. You know, I'm wearing a cap. People keep asking uh, what, what's going on. Uh, I, I, I've met so many wonderful people. And, and this young woman, she has her uh, Love My Jeans line. Um, which is Love My Jeans, uh, 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 J-E-N-E-S, right? And um, yeah. it is uh, amazing. She goes by the name of Wheelchair Rapunzel on Instagram. Mm -hmm. And she has started this line primarily, and I have her information right here, uh, because she says in her own, and I think we'll probably edit in some, some photographs of her, she's, she's beautiful, uh, she says, I developed Love Your Jeans one afternoon after some deep thinking about how I can create something that's meaningful to me and other people. I have a rare genetic condition called spinal muscular atrophy, SMA, which is a progressive neuromuscular disease that causes lo loss of strength muscle. I hardly ever Google SMA uh, because the first thing you'll see is number one genetic killer of infants. SMA is one of thousands of genetic disorders that people are affected by. I then began to choose to look at this as uh, at what is considered a genetic flaw in a different way, whether it's having blue eyes, SMA Down syndrome, etc. All of us are affected by our own unique genetic makeup, making each one of us our own thumbprint. Uh, that, of course, was taken from her website which i think is a beautiful message so i i bought the cap love my jeans i don't know if we can get it up close if we can don't worry we'll edit it in and christina i knew you were going to be here she also has a bracelet with love your jeans and she also has t-shirts caps but isn't this beautiful love that's your amazing. jeans wow. so that's for you thank you now don't tell our colleagues because of course they all want one and they're going to be yeah. so <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. but you know I found out about this this beautiful young woman on social media. And Robert, I met you on social media. And you know, if it was not for social media, the exposure the exposure that we're experiencing right now uh, and the inspirations would not exist. Exactly. So I, I, agree. Think, I, I just wanted to see if you guys agreed with that or do you think or do you think what, what is our opinion of social media? I think it's an amazing platform where people can loudly speak about who they are. Mm -hmm. It gives them the opportunity to really create a brand. Like she has a brand. Yes. You know, love your jeans. Um, I have my own brand, mm -hmm. um, although it's something separate from what I do for work specifically. But my brand, I've chosen it to be as an author. You know, yes. that was my book. And Robert has a brand as well. He's yes. an artist. So you know, people recognize that people connect to it because they, when they're seeking for some kind of work um, on Instagram, you know, once you do a search, quickly everything pops up. And right. you can connect with such amazing people in, like within seconds. Right. So why not use it, you know, why not leverage your skills and why not connect with these amazing people, right. you know? Okay, and, and Robert? I'm, uh, I'm, that I, that I'm, I'm connected with people in Munich, Germany. I'm connected with people yes, in Cologne. Worldwide. I'm connected all around the world. And, uh, uh, and, just, uh, and I'm also inspiring young artists who are visually impaired as well. Yes, very and, good and I think I love being a role model to say, if I yeah. can do it, you can do it. Mm -hmm. that, that seems to be my number one message, That's that we can't let things stop us. It's not what happens to you, it's what you do with it. Exactly. Right. Love exactly. That. Love that. It was a pleasure having you both on the show. Robert, I can't thank you enough. And listen, let's keep thank in you. touch. Thank you very Instagram, much. Okay. Like meeting you, Christina, in person, and I wish you the best with your thank poetry. Thank you. That would be a pleasure. And yes. thank you for your warm message. <laughs> well, <laughs> thank you so much. Peace. Okay, thank take you. care. And I think that about wraps us up. Everybody, we'll see you all in a few weeks. Uh, find us on Instagram and Facebook and um, Words as Weapons. Uh, Robert Hoyt has a great collection, and hopefully, Robert, we'll see you in Soho at an art gallery very, very soon. Thank you. That's my dream. Take care. It's see so you fun. soon. That was great. <laughs> <laughs>
Hey, thank you for uh, taking the time to watch that. Uh, my initial thought is, uh, in so many words, um, as I mentioned before, my, my goal is to be an inspiration to others um, and to continue to follow my, my, uh, my purpose in life. And essentially, if you get a chance, Google WNEP16 Blind Artist. Uh, I was given a couple of uh, 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 chances to be on TV there for ABC. And I was also on the cover of the Citizen's Voice. It was a Sunday paper. And I, the joke was I got on the cover of the, the front cover of the paper without killing someone or selling drugs. But yeah, I guess that's not the, the funniest joke. But essentially, uh, it was called Blind Vision. A legally Blind Artist um, is painting and inspiring others. Okay, thanks again. And uh, click that uh, you know, subscribe button. That would definitely help me um, to reach more people and to gain some some momentum. Okay. Meanwhile, remember, believe you can, and you will.